Interpreter to escape an upsurge of violence on Wednesday. The situation in Syria is getting worse, says the United Nations. A UN spokesman said 1.5 million Syrians are now in need of humanitarian assistance, up from their previous estimate of 1 million. The figure is going up because the situation is deteriorating. There is uh, ongoing violence that we see. That violence also hinders us as humanitarian workers to get to those in need. Meanwhile, Swedish, Bulgarian and Polish foreign ministers meet with politicians in Beirut in an EU-backed effort to prevent the Syrian conflict from spreading into Lebanon. Lebanon has seen clashes between supporters and opponents of the uprising against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, with its border region used by fleeing rebels to smuggle arms into Syria. Syria's northern neighbor, Turkey, has also become a flashpoint for those seeking refuge from the ongoing crisis. More than 10,000 people have been killed in the 15-month-old crisis in Syria, and at least half a million have been internally displaced. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, June 22nd, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. On YouTube, my channel is DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. Okay. Um, there's a poll up here I've had up here in, for a couple days. You have six days left to vote. How long until a drone kills the first American on American soil? So a majority of people so far are saying within the next year, followed by within the next two years. So not looking too good. Um, uh, you can follow by email right there, or if you'd like to help GGN, you can donate. And the only way to do it really is on this website. So, all right, so I'm ready to start here. You just saw this video uh, of Syrian refugees in need of help. Well, of course, right? It's all about the Turkish border. And when that happens, that's when the RTP kicks in the uh, responsibility to protect or rights to protect. So, and of course, it's international coalition, so you know it's coming from your international round tables, i.e., the elites of the New World Order. It's coming straight for them. And um, there's a lot of disinfo going on right now. There's a lot of propaganda, heavy psyops. I mean, we I remember talking about how this was going to be coming um, about a week ago, and it's here. So a lot of really crazy stories going on in the media, and it's really hard to tell what is true and what is not. But you can see what the agenda is, and they can't just go in. I'm talking about the Western powers. They can't just go in and start bombing Syria and then raising the U.S. flag and saying, we, we defeated, you know, we won, you know, it's like, it kind of looks bad, you know, it's a bad public image for the, for the global elite, so they like to do it through the guise of humanitarianism, and that's exactly what they're doing, so they arm, you have the CIA, uh, now it's pretty, pretty much confirmed, I mean, I just saw a video of um, some woman coming out saying, yeah, you know, it's been consistent, uh, the government's been consistent on its policy with Syria, yeah, it's like, no, you fucking bitch, you're lying. You're lying through your teeth, you know? And there's a video, you can go check it out. And um, I think she's on Fox talking about the, how the CIA is uh, basically arming the Syrian rebels, which I've been covering for over a month, if not two months. So now the New York Times is now confirming that. And she's saying that, oh, it's been like this all the time. Oh, has it? Has it? I just, I, I just love how she just flat out lied about how they were lying. The weapons, including automatic rifles, rocket-propelled grenades, ammunition, and some anti-tank weapons, are being funneled mostly across the Turkish border by way of a shadow network of intermediaries, uh, including Syria's Muslim Brotherhood and uh, paid for by Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. So it says Syria's Muslim Brotherhood. So that's, and like I said before, I just keep reiterating this, Muslim Brotherhood is a Western proxy. So. And of course we know that uh, there's probably stuff that's, I mean, Syria gets most of their, their arms and stuff like that already prior to this from Russia. So, I mean, that was already in the make in the making. But the Times, New York Times reports that the CIA officers have been in southern Turkey for several weeks aiming to help keep Americans and ammunition flowing across the border and out of the hands of Al-Qaeda. So, you know, and other terrorist groups within the rebel militias. So, you know, Al-Qaeda is basically part of the rebel militias. That's why it's funny when I saw that video that women say, well, we've got to keep the arms, trying to make sure the CIA's making sure the arms aren't getting into Al-Qaeda, which is what we call it Al-Qaeda. CIA's own little terrorist group. So, you know, it's just, again, it's just a pack of lies. But there was a video from this website, too, uh, NTD. and a lot of propaganda on there, but sometimes you get a little nuggets of video, uh, truth and stuff like that. 
even though it's propaganda, it's still, you know what I'm saying, it's coverage. So uh, it came from this website, and it was about Turkey, and they showed all, like, it literally looked like a FEMA camp, guys. I remember covering this about two months ago, and they're ready to go. They got all these little uh, trailers and stuff like that and gated and stuff for uh, these refugees. So it says here, US, U.S. ambassador taps Facebook to drive wedge between Syrian uh, military and Assad using social media, which is created you know by DARPA and, and brought about by CIA and uh, uh, front companies and stuff like that US ambassador Robert Ford wants Syrian military officers uh, warns them that they could be prosecuted for crimes against humanity by following President Assad al-Assad's orders so it says he spent much of his time uh, taking America's support for Syria's pro-democracy opposition or regime change directly to the streets before he was pulled out of the country in February out of concern for his personal safety. It's like, hey man, if you're gonna start a civil war, let's, let's, uh, you know, you might as well just stay in theater, right? It says here, Syria calls Air Force defector traitor demands Jordan return fighter jet. So a statement released just hours after a Syrian fighter jet makes emergency landing at a northern uh, Jordanian air base. So yeah, they're calling him a traitor. So yeah, that's part of the psyops, that's part of the defecting that's going on. Syrian diplomat reportedly passing military intel to Israel and U.S. So, again, is this true? I can't confirm it 100%, but this is what they're saying. Serving envoy trusted by Des Damascus has detailed how Iran arms Hezbollah via Sir, uh, Syria. So, Syrian rebels accused of massacring 25 people in northern village. So we know that the rebels were responsible for what was at the... Um, uh, Hallous, uh, uh massacre where a suicide bomber killed like a crap load of people. So apparently this Free Syrian Army, the peaceful activists, um, abducted these individuals on Friday. And it goes on and says that it's known by the UN that uh, these opposition fighters are uh, killing and torturing. I want to speed it up here. Um, Turkey from regional to global player. So says here that Turkey is seeking a stronger role in world politics, whether it's domestic political problems, i.e. a lot of the people maybe do not trust the government, as well as a regional crisis pose major challenges to its foreign policy ambitions. In fact, a former U.S. National Security Advisor, Stephen Hadley, said Turkey has become one of the five or six most important countries in the world. and said their economy is really strong, too. It says here, Turkey says Syria shot down jet over Mediterranean. So this is the kind of big news that's been going around. So you have a separate jet that uh, emergency landing into Jordan, and then you have this one. So, but it goes on there and it says that uh, it was understood a military warplane was crashed in the Mediterranean Sea was shot down by Syria. So this has come from the Turkey. So who knows? Could have just put a pilot up there and their own government shot it down. I mean, it's just one pilot. I mean, I know it costs money to train these guys, but still, I mean, if it strikes off a war and uh, it just really kind of gets it going. It's just one pilot, I'm telling you. They don't give a shit about you if you're a pilot or if you're a, a grunt on the ground or, or if you're an avionics technician or something, you know. They don't care. You're disposable. So it says here, CIA spies in Turkey sec secretly help arm gangs in Syria. So we already saw this, but look at this. I'm going to switch gears. Henry Kissinger, a technocrat or globalist, says the moment of truth on Iran is within months. Remember, he was just at a convention for Mitt Romney, probably the guy who's going to get reelected because Obama's just pissing everybody off, including Democrats. It says here, Henry Kissinger, upon receiving Israel's presidential award from Israeli president, uh, Shimon Perez said the moment of truth on the Iran question will be uh, months ahead. He goes on, he says that uh, at what point one concludes that negotiations have reached their limit, it is not a question that should be answered unilaterally. Oh, of course it will be, right? At Tuesday's ceremony, Perez called Kissinger a brother, hailing the tremendous effort you made to help us on every occasion as a great statesman and as a great Jew. So next up, Clinton. Iran wants to be attacked. Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton discusses the potential of nuclear Tehran with seasoned diplomat, blah, 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 right? Says attack would unify Iranian uh, public, legitimize regime. Uh, U.S. is only country in world that can stop Iran, says Baker. So, of course, Iran doesn't want to be attacked. I mean, there's people in that country that are probably shitting in their pants, and they're just like, okay, let's just get this over with, because they, you know, they've been hearing about this for at least the past 10 years about getting bombed, right? I'm sure they're not wanting it to happen or look forward to it to happen. And this is what they have to, to put, the crap they have to put out there is that uh, they don't want to be the aggressors, they don't want to be the attackers. Most of you understand that, but to the laymen out there, just they don't know too much, or you know they don't have time to, to to put all the pieces together 
that's what they do, right? So they have to uh, they have to play these little games like the nuclear game and stuff like that. You know, Israel and, and U.S. having more nukes probably the entire world put together, but they're worried about uh, our, a nuclear Iran because they have their own central bank and stuff like that, and they're dealing oil and stuff. They could undercut Europe, uh, basically the British royalty, uh, their own oil companies. So yeah, they're not going to just go on the attack. They're going to actually float a boat over there, like you know whatever ship is out there now in the Suez Canal, and allow it to be attacked. I mean, it's kind of like the the jet that they flew over on the border of Syria. It's it's just one of those things called a false flag. U.S. special forces floating base headed through Suez to Persian Gulf. So there you go. Ship will allow small scale deployments from offshore anywhere in the region. The USS Ponce, an amphibious transport ship called a floating base for U.S. special forces to launch attacks. U.S. weighs plan to send military aircraft to aid Yemen, says senior U.S. commanders say they're deploying a cargo aircraft that could be a key to U.S.-backed offensive in Yemen against al-Qaeda militants. Well, they're against tribes, I believe. They're, you know, when they say al-Qaeda, it usually means just regular tribal uh, people that don't want uh, foreign intervention. So. It says here, at least 39 killed in U.S. assassination drone attacks in Somalia. So, uh, again, more people getting killed by drones in Somalia. And where are they originating from? Well, in Ethiopia, a CIA drone base. So, it says here, first contingent of two, uh, 200 U.S. Marines arrives in Darwin. This is big news. I've actually touched, touched down on ground in Darwin. So, maybe they'll enjoy it. It's a great city to, to chill and stuff like that. I just recommend not going in the water. So it says here, U.S. South Korea say massive live fire drills are warning against North Korea. So remember the Clinton saying that North Korea was provoking a war. They're provoking a war. Well, what are they doing right here? Again, they're trying, they're floating it out there so that they can get attacked. And they can say, oh, we've been attacked. North Korea attacked us. A huge North Korean flag disappeared behind a tower of flames and thick black smoke as South Korean fighter jets and U.S. Uh, Attack helicopters fired rockets in the Allies' biggest joint live fire drill. So gunfire is flying around and says the rockets did not hit their flag. So that's not provoking, though. Obama extends U.S. emergency over Russian nuclear threat. That's right. He said uh, he, noticed, uh, he put in a notice of extension for publication in the U.S. Federal Register on Monday. Uh, the Russian Federation's, uh, basically their fissile material, uh, poses an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the corporation of the United States. Yeah, and Obama was there too. Um, it says here with Kissinger, Obama honors Israeli criminal with Medal of Freedom. So yeah, he won the Medal of Freedom, and uh, this is for a man who has overseen the killing of Palestinian women and children by Israeli special uh, Israeli defense forces in occupied territories for decades. And we're going to shift gears here to the economy. Lukewarm support for EU Uber president. Remember the super president? So yes, yeah, as German led. Uh, show lackluster support for the creation of a powerful new EU super president. Then Los Cabos Summit, globalists are taking incremental steps on the road to globalizing the regulation of capital. Remember the Pope was calling for that too, right? Basically transparency of all financial transactions in a global bank. Then we have a non-executive chairman of Goldman Sachs and former chairman of BP saying the EU should undermine national homogeneity says a UN migration chief. He said the future of prosperity of many EU states depend on them becoming multicultural. They're also trying to push what? A United States of Europe. So he's basically saying he wants to kill national unity or pride. He says here ECB or European Central Bank officially announces easing of collateral rules confirms Europe has run out of asset. The ECB rates as Spider-Man towel backed currency triple A. We have the Troika returning to Greece on Monday followed by Gillard keen to support sustainable development. There's a picture of her announcing the introduction of a national carbon tax to the United Nations co uh, Conference, followed by $46 million carbon tax bill for hospitals and schools. It says here the average hospital in Australia will be hit with 120,000 annual carbon bill after it kicks in on July 1st along with schools. And it looks like Royal Dutch Shell Oil Company is going to import, import foreign workers into Australia. While the Australian government will also make it easier for foreign recruits of uh, their forces basically to become citizens, their families, from four year waiting period to just 90 days. And it looks like Toledo, Ohio will be the first major American city to be owned by China. And due to the sluggish economy, G4S chief predicts mass police privatization. That's right, private companies will be running police service within five years. Thank you.